Did you say, how old am I? <laughs> oh, 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 how old am I? There's my Where's my notes? Um, we can clap again. For <laughs> Not for me. Miles and Letha. What I love about that song is that uh, the sunshine is an image for clarity. It's a metaphor for you know, clarity, being able to see. And when the singer of the song, when the writer of the song, and us who sings the song along, the obstacles don't disappear. We can just see them. Isn't that amazing? It's going to be a bright, sunshiny day, not because there are no obstacles in my life, but because I can see the obstacles. I'm aware of them. I'm accepting of them. And that's what makes it a bright, sunshiny day. So let's clap one more time for them. Mm. And Amy, uh, you, you speak like gentle rain in the springtime. As you're sitting here talking and just flowing energy out, and sometimes I don't even know what you're talking about, but I love it. <laughs> it reminds me of someone. Um, but it is. It's like a gentle rain. Your voice is like a gentle rain that just washes over me. So we can clap for Amy one more time. <laughs> mm. So this may surprise you, but last night I got angry. Oh, what? What? No, no. At my children. What? What? That doesn't happen. So Livy has no idea, Livy is my oldest daughter, that I like to sleep. And my sleep cycle is regimented because I am old. And so knowing I had to be here at a certain time this morning or Dusty would be angry with me, I said to myself, I'm going to bed at this time. She didn't care. So at 11.30, 11.45 last night, she calls me or texts me and says, okay, I'm ready. Come and get me. And so I have to go get in my car. And of course, Becky is saying exactly what I want her to say, the wife. She's like, I'll do it. <sighs> Does that mean she'll do it? <laughs> no. It means that I want it on record <laughs> that I offered. And I want you to say, no, I'll do it. <laughs> so I said, no, I'll do it. And then I went to pick her up. And I was angry the whole time. Of course, she got in the car. I know. Amen, brother. She said, oh, I'm, and of course, when she gets in the car, she's just like I was when I was her age. You'll remember this. Um, I'm going to do exactly what I want to do, Dad, and then I'm going to feel bad about it. So as she gets in the car, and she's like, Dad, I'm so sorry. I'm so, are you mad at me? I'm so sorry. And of course, I'm like, no. I'm just tired. Uh, we've said that before. Are you angry? No, I'm just tired. And so the whole way home, I am angry and focused on driving. Just get me home. It's past my bedtime. And then Libby goes, stop, stop, stop. And I stop the car, and a bunch of deer run past me. And in that moment, my anger immediately shifted to gratitude. And I looked at her. I was like, you saved those deer. You saved us. And you saved my car from getting a big dent in the front. She did that. In that moment, she said, stop, 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 because she was paying attention to the road, and I was paying attention to being angry. And so for the rest of the night, I got to pay attention to being grateful, and then I couldn't be mad anymore. I mean, I didn't like that I couldn't be mad anymore. Of course, then I got angry that I couldn't be mad anymore. <laughs> so now she'll be able to do what she wants the next time, too, because I'll be like, she'll be like, remember when I saved you from those deer? <laughs> <sighs> so that was, that's, that was last night. <sighs> so what are we going to talk about today? I'll give you a hint. You're going to love this. I'll give you a hint. It's gray. It climbs trees. And it gathers nuts. That's right. Jesus. <laughs> this was a joke my grandmother used to tell us. She grew up in the Baptist church, and she tells this joke about this little boy who's, <laughs> who's in a class, like a Sunday school class. And, you know, it says, I have a question for you, kids. And, oh, man, I got a question for you. What is gray, climbs trees, and collects nuts? And what do you think, Junior? And he goes, uh, Jesus? <laughs> because that's what you do. When you're in, growing up in the church, every answer is Jesus. And I just thought that was just a wonderful joke. And it reminds me of what I always do here. Because I might start out with something that's gray and climbing trees and gathering nuts. But I always get to the exact same place. 
and I always talk about the exact same thing. So maybe that boy had it right. But I'm going to talk about my very favorite topic today, the thing I always talk about, the thing I think about all the time, the most important thing in my life, me. I think about me all the time. And what I think about, I think you probably do the same, maybe not about me, but about you, is I think, who am I? What am I? Who am I going to be? In fact, you may not know it, but in the back of your heads, you are thinking that all the time. And the machine that is your mind is constantly running the program that asks the question, who am I? What am I? And what am I going to be? And there are so many cool ways of answering that question. If I asked you, or if someone asked you, let's say you're at the water cooler tomorrow. Do y'all still have water coolers at work? Yeah, water coolers. So you're at the water cooler. And then, hey, what'd you do yesterday? Oh, I went into the thing and I heard Andy talk. Oh, who's Andy? The first thing that would come to your mind is probably this. No? <laughs> No? Not what I look like? Well, I think the very first, the, the key of identity, the first thing we usually think about is what we look like. Or if you said, hey, Susan, Susan, a picture of Susan would pop in my head. Picture of Susan maybe like on a goose. I don't know why on a goose, but on a goose. So the first thing when we think about identity, the first way we typically shh, think about who we are is we think about what we look like. I am this body. I am what I look like. I am this physical form. Now, these are all temporal identities, by the way, because the entire time I'm talking, you're going to be thinking, but I'm, not, I'm more than that. I'm more than that. I'm more than that. I'm God. I'm God. I'm God. We're going to get there. <laughs> the squirrel will become Jesus, but these are temporal identities. So the first thing we think about is I am what I look like. I am this physical form. I am what I see in the mirror. When I look in the mirror and see me, I'm like, yeah, that's me. That's number one. The second thing we typically think about when we think about who we are, identity, who am I, identity is our relationships. Who is Andy? Well, Andy is a father. Why? Because he has children. It's a relationship. Andy is a husband. Why? Because he hears this voice all the time telling him what to do. And that's the very definition of a husband. Andy is a son. Why is Andy a son? Because Andy has parents. Andy has that relationship. Andy is a brother. Brother, what's up, brother? Because Andy has that relationship. We are who we relate to. So that's number two. So one, I am my body. I am this thing, this temporal identity. I can see myself in the mirror and go, yeah, that's me. And two, I am my relationships. I'm who I relate to. But there's more than that. I could also be my occupation. This is America. When you meet someone, what's the first thing you ask? What do you do? What do I do? Well, I am a minister. That's my occupation. It's part of who I am. I am a chaplain. It's part of my occupation. It's a part of who I am. So we describe ourselves using our occupation. Body, relationship, occupation. There's more. Society. I am the society that surrounds me. What is Andy? Oh, he's a white American. White American. Why? Because this country relates to me in that way and defines me based on that. I live in this country and I relate to this country as that. And so they define me and I say, okay, well, I guess that's okay. So, so many ways of claiming and figuring out who we are. And of course, here in the Triangle Center for Spiritual Living, we often say, I am what I think. Thank you. I was hoping someone said it. <laughs> she's, she's so smart. I am what I think I am. And of course, if you look at about, uh, back at the things I just said, all of those are really just thoughts. I am what I think I look like. I am what I think I relate to. I am what I think my society says. I am what I think my job is. Now, you're probably wondering, Andy, you're, one, you're so wondering. I'm so wondering right now. I'm on the edge of my seat. You're probably wondering which of these is most true of my temporal identity and is Andy going to tell me which one of these is the most true of my temporal identity well they're all kind of true and I don't really think when it comes to these things is it true is the most the best question we can ask I think we should be asking which is most useful 
When I'm trying to figure out who I am, when I'm trying to figure out what is this, who am I, what am I, where am I going, really what I want to know is what is most useful. If you're going to use this thing, and you're using it anyway, you're using it whether we know it or not. If I'm going to use this thing, I want my thoughts to be useful. So if I'm going to define who I am, if I'm the one who gets to say who I am, then I want my thoughts about who I am to be useful. I want them to be pragmatic. So I brought one to you today. I have brought you a useful thought that I think may help, may not. You could walk away saying he's completely wrong and that's okay. Just don't come back next time because I don't want your negative energy. (laughs) No, you can come. No, disagreeing is good. Disagreeing is good. I like dissonance. This is good. So here's what I'm going to claim. Are you ready? You're not going to like it. You're, you're going to hate it. Let's go. You ready? Are you ready? I am claiming that one of the most useful forms of identity is you are what you do. Ooh, you don't like that, do you? You like that? You're not. So here's the thing. You're not really supposed to like that. If I say, no, you, you can like, you're different, you're rain. <laughs> but you're not supposed, this side is not supposed to like that. And here's the reason. We have a reaction to that for a couple reasons. You are what you do. I am what I do. You're not going to like it, number one, because you have spent time in spiritual communities that are trying to get you deeper into existential identity beyond temporal identity. And that's cool. That's what we're doing. But I'm talking about temporal identity, so we can suspend that judgment. Two, you're not going to like it because we live in a country that constantly tries to define us by what we can produce. And we attach doing to production. I am this because I do this, therefore I produce this for the gross national product, yay America. So you're not really supposed to like it. But I think if you give me the benefit of the doubt, I can convince you. And if I can't convince you, it's okay. Your life will just be terrible. (laughs) You are what you do. Why is that a really groovy thought? Because I think it contains every other thought about identity. That's right, Susan, I said it. I am what I look like. I am this body. Why? Because of what my body is doing. Life is doing something biologically right here in front of you right now. My body is life doing something biologically as this entity, and I am what my body does. This is my vehicle for life. And I am that vehicle. Temporally, I am the changes that go into my body. Right now, I am digesting coffee. Can you see it? Can you see it? <laughs> Can you see it? I am digesting coffee. Later on, I will return the coffee to the world and I'll refill it again. I am that. That's what my body is doing. It is participating in those functions. When you sleep, your mind is still working. When you go into REM, which is rapid eye movement, and you stop dreaming and you drift into deep consciousness, your body is still working. If it stops, have your spouse. (laughs) Your body is constantly doing things. Life is movement, and guess who you are? You are life living as you, as this body. Convince you? Not quite. I am my relationships. What makes me a father? A couple different things. I'm going to get to the picture in a minute. It's a great picture. A couple different things. One, biologically, 15 years ago, I did something with someone. And now there's a 15-year-old girl. And you could say, well, you're not doing that anymore. You're married. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> But, so you could say, no, you're done with that. You're not her father anymore because you're no longer doing that. Well, guess what my DNA is doing? It's working inside of her right now. Oh, that sounds terrible. But, you know, (laughs) my, my chromosomes, the reason she looks like the way she looks, the reason she acts, (laughs) The way she acts is because I provide a genetic material that is still working inside of her. Biologically, I'm her father because what her body is doing. That sounds better. But my father had a little picture. I can still see it. It was a woven picture. 
It's like woven, like the words were woven. It said, um, any man can be a father, but it takes someone special to be a daddy. I remember that. I remember that. Daddy. I'm s I remember that. Why am I a father? Biologically, because of the DNA stuff. But more importantly, we know that biology is, is a very small percentage of fatherhood. I am a father because of what I do. Because I participate in fatherhood. The best thing, the only thing a parent should do is show up. Do parent things. Participate in their lives. And then you are a father. I am a husband. Why? Because I signed a paper 20-something years ago? Well, legally, that paper is still working its way through the government files, but I am a husband because I participate. I do husband things. I participate in that relationship. I am a son because of their DNA, and I participate in this relationship. I do relational things. Body, relationship, occupation. What makes me a minister? Because I do minister things. I always say I want to be a writer. I want to be a writer. I want to be a writer. Well, guess what? I write. So I guess I'm a writer. If you want to be a writer, write. I do written things. I often call myself a mystic and a theologian. Why? Because I participate in the constant search for the experience of God and deepening that experience. And I write about it. I think about it. I participate in those things. I do those things. Those are my occupations. Why am I a white American? Because I participate in America and this, what's it called? Is it melanin or melatonin? Melanin. And the melanin in my skin causes a different participation with this society. Will it always cause one? I hope not. But right now it causes a very unique participation in our society. I am participating in American society constantly. I am what I do. And you know why that is so cool? You know why that is so groovy? Because life does. Sounds very southern. Laugh. Does. That's what life is. Life is a constant doing. And as a self-reflective being, as a human being with a mind that reflects on life, I get to participate in that doing. I am life, and I get to recognize it. Every day I wake up, and the body sits up, there are things going in my body, things doing. And I get to participate in that doing. And guess what? If I, thank you, thank you. If I want to do something else, what do I got to do? Something else. If I want to be someone else, what do I got to do? Do something else. I want to be kind. Do kind things. I want to love. Love. Do that. I want to create. Create. Do creative things. It's that easy. If I want to become something different, all I have to do is do something different. I am what I do, and I'm constantly doing something, so I might as well participate in it and shift the boat in this direction and do the things that bring me joy. You ready to talk about the squirrel? Yeah. You ready for the squirrel? The squirrel's been creeping the whole time. Nah. <laughs> <sighs> Got to talk about God. I can't help it. We are doing, we are life. God is being, at least the God as we think about it, as we conceptualize that, which is just a shadow of the reality. God just is. God is not movement. God just is. It's the isness. When we drop down into peace and there is just like, you know, when you mention, like, ah, what do I have to talk after the thing? Because all talking is just shadows of the reality, the truth. God is just that thing. God is just being until being becomes. When God wants to do something, what does God do? Life. Life is God doing. When being becomes, it becomes life. And guess what? Each one of you are expressions of that. You are God doing you as life. So when I make a choice, when I take, make a choice to do something, I'm making a choice to direct God's being in a certain direction, which makes every single act sacred. Every single act a miracle. A miracle. Yes. When I choose to eat, 
I am choosing to participate in the feeding of my body. I'm choosing to fuel God's creation sacred. When I sleep, I am resting. I am allowing this body to rest. I am participating in resting, and tomorrow I will be reborn, and then God is doing that, and I get to allow God to do that. So everything I do is God doing something as life. And when we recognize that, every doing becomes a ritual. Every doing becomes sacred. Every doing becomes beautiful. And you get to participate in that. You get to make the choices. Three questions. Three questions. I thought you put up two. <laughs> Sorry, I'm three. Three questions. One. Who are you going to be? Who are you going to be? Two related to one. What are you going to do? Question three, what is God going to do with you? One, what am I going to be? Who am I going to be? I'm going to be what I do. I'm going to be kinder. So I'm going to participate in kindness. I'm going to be creative. So I'm going to do creative things. I'm going to be a light. So I'm going to shine. I'm going to be the rain on somebody's crops. So I'm going to let my life flow. I'm going to be those things. Number two, what am I going to do? I'm going to do what I become. And I'm going to become what I do. And I'm going to think about it every moment. I'm going to be aware that every doing is a sacred act. That even as I lift my finger up and close it like this to make a point, that is a sacred act. Because without me, God couldn't do this. And without God, I couldn't do this. So even right now, in this moment, I get to be what God does as life. So one, who are you going to be? You get to decide. You get to make that choice. You get to do those things. Two, what are you going to do when you leave here today? What are you going to do? And three, what is God going to do with you? Because when you drop down into that sacred barrel, when you get down into the being that exists, and you open that up, you said something. Somebody said something. Increase, you said, you said, you said, you said. Increase the soul. You said something about, in, when I'm in this room, you have increased the container, the soul is the container. So every time I get down into God, every time I do spiritual things, I increase and expand the soul and allow more of that God to pour through me, making those moments, making that doing sacred. So that's all I want you to do today. All I want you to do today is do. But as you do, I want you to remember, I am God doing, and I become what I do. So who do I want to be? What do I want to do? And man, what's God going to do with me? Whew, you're tired of listening. I'm tired of talking. Let's pray. I am a temporal manifestation. I am life moving. I am cells and molecules and DNA. I am relationships. I am what I participate in. I am who I spend my time with. I am sacred activity. I am occupations. I am what I choose to give my time to. I am government and society and culture. I am all those things. And I am more. I am before Abraham. I am this morning. I am before the foundations of the world were created. I am. So what am I going to be? What am I going to do? In this moment, all that we can do is ask that every sacred moment be realized as such. All that we can ask is that we are able to move out of the way and allow the stirrings of being to become this moment, to recognize how beautiful, what a miracle it is just to exist and do something. So what am I going to do today? Who am I going to be? And God, what are you going to be through me? How can I be a gift to someone else? 
And I'm grateful for this sacred container. I'm grateful for the expansion of the soul to allow spirit to move that happens every time I'm in this room with you all. It's a beautiful moment. It's a sunshiny day because I can see all the obstacles and those are just gifts. How am I going to choose to do something with this in my way? It's a bright, sunshiny day, and I am thankful, and we say, and so it is. Amen. Thank you so much. I appreciate you listening. Thank you.